Hello everyone, welcome back to some more Python programming videos. We're still looking at XML RPC lib, or now we're kind of actually going to move on from XML RPC lib anyway. We're going to move we're going to move into creating a server with XML RPC rather than the client access that we've been using with the XML RPC lib module. So if you kind of browse through and peruse through more of the Python documentation for the XML RPC lib module, you'll notice way down at the bottom it shows off uh, how to use the uh, X simple XML RPC server, or at least it shows some examples of, of, of using those. So I was a little curious and wanted to learn a little bit more about them. So let's let's actually do a video on that. You know, let's let's show off how to how to use these. So I want to know the documentation for this guy. So I'm gonna Google that Python. Python, do, 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 do. simple XML RPC server. So this guy, uh, this module, is a library that provides basic server framework for XML RPC servers written in Python. Servers can either be freestanding using simple XML RPC server or embedded in a CGI environment using CGI XML RPC request handler. I'm not going to get into the CGI version. If you want to do that research on your own, of course you can. And notice again at the top here, there is a note that this module has been merged to xmlrpc.server and Python 3. We had the same thing with xmlrpc.client, with xmlrpc.lib. So just so you know, if you're using Python 3, you got your 2 to 3 tool to do whatever you need to do, but blah, blah, blah. Just, just have that note and thing in your mind. So this module has one class, or well, I guess multiple classes, but the one that I want to show off and use is the simple XML RPC server class. Now this takes an address, and from what I've seen, this address is often a tuple with the address and port that we're going to be using it on. So for our example, yeah, we'll use localhost and 8000. And we'll just kind of go through with some of these uh, examples. I'll just demonstrate them and show you them for you. So let's kind of go through with it. We created the new server instance, um, and let's let's just do that. I'll fire up idle, and I'm going to import simple XML RPC server. That's right, isn't it? Yep. All right. Import. Cool. Now I'm just going to copy this, and I'll say server can equal this, and the address. We'll use. Oh, thanks, autocomplete. Didn't really need that there. Localhost. Local. Always <laughs> these. And uh, 8000 can be our port. That's just fine. Cool. So now we've got our server, server object. And what we'll do, now that we've got that created, let's go through a little bit more of these uh, this documentation. Once we've created the object, you can see that the server class is based on socket server TCP server and provides a means of creating a simple standalone XML RPC server. It might be some it might be worthwhile to kind of see what this contains sometime. Do some research on the socket server TCP server. So what we can do is we can register functions. Register a function that can respond to XML RPC requests. If name is given, it will be given the method name associated with function. Otherwise, function.name will be used, the actual name of the function itself. And the name argument can be either a normal or Unicode string. It may contain characters not legal in Python identifiers, including the period character. Huh. Now that's because we were able to see things like sample.add in the last tutorial, in the last video. So, um, allow dotted names is for register instance, which I probably won't go through. Register introspection uh, functions should be called, but we'll play with it and see if that works for us. Multi-call functions we'll get into, and echo thresholds, RPC paths. So stuff to read about and stuff to learn if you want to go through with it. But let's check out what we've got here. Let's create a new function. Let's call ours add, just like the example they were using, x and y, and we'll return x plus y. Simple stuff. Server dot register function. Stupid caps lock. And the function will be add. 
and I'm not going to supply a name variable there, so it'll just use our name variable that comes with the function, like the actual name of the function at. So I'm going to create a new idle session, and what I'll do is connect to the server, but we have to actually turn the server on, right? I know I saw a function earlier that was like serve forever. Yeah, server dot serve forever. Is that in the documentation? Serve forever. Huh. It sh it shows it in examples, but doesn't actually show any uh, documentation about it. But I'm sure that's the way that's actually running the main loop. We could saw that. We actually saw that in the uh, in the examples here. Run the server's main loop with serve forever. Let's try it. Server dot serve forever. Okay, and now it's doing its thing. So now in my other Python shell, my other idle session, let's try importing XML RPC lib. I wonder if I can connect to it. XML RPC lib. I'll say client can equal XML RPC dot lib dot server proxy, and URI can be localhost unsupported XML RPC protocol. I think we might need to specify the 8000 port here. Let's try it. No. Okay. Uh, I would think we need to supply HTTP over here. Oh. Okay, that works just fine for us. So, I use HTTP colon two forward slashes to represent hypertext transfer protocol, localhost being the name of it, and I supplied 8000 as my port with the colon there. So, there we go, that works for us. Now, if I try and use client.system, it doesn't get anything. If I try and use client.system.listMethods, it's going to throw an error at me. It says, system list methods is not supported. Well, why is that? We can see in our server, okay, people are trying to actually call from it, we're trying to get some uh, methods and information from it, that's right here at our localhost address, so I'm going to hit control C and interrupt the server. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and call that uh, function that we saw up top here. The register introspection functions. So this will let us actually test for the functions that we have seen. Have I still got my server going? Good. Server dot register introspection functions. So now we'll, we'll be able to use everything in that system subclass. If I turn the server on, serve forever, let's go ahead and connect to it, client, create that new session. Now if I use client system.list methods, hey, we got everything that we saw earlier, and we've got our add function, which we registered here. Now I can run this, client.add. Now note I'm not using sample or anything preceding it, because in our list methods, it returns all the names of functions, so this truly is the name here. If I add 3 and 7, it will be returned to us 10, and you can see in our server, hey, it's trying, it's reading these, it's reading these requests from us. HTTP POST requests. Cool. So, let's add a new uh, function to our server. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close it, and I'll do server, actually we gotta define a new function, let's say, define subtraction function. This will be simple, take x and y, return x, y, return x minus y. Server.register function. Register is a function to respond to the XML RPC requests. We'll pass in our subtraction function. And this time I will supply a name for the name uh, argument, and we'll just say sub, or subtract. So now that's registered, we'll call our server to serve forever. We'll connect to it, client equals this, client.system, list methods, and now we've got our subtract function, client.subtract. 4 and 1 
Should get three. Three. Sweet. That's fantastic. I am a little curious, and it might take a little bit more research on my end, as to where we can get the method help information. Where can we set that? Client.system.method help. Now it needs a string, so let's say add. And nothing is returned. I wonder if it's got to be like in the in like documentation strings for the functions. If I subtract, if I define, sorry, my subtraction function with documentation strings, you know, three quotes, three quotes here. If I were to say subtract two numbers from each other. Subtraction x y will return x minus y. Now that that's saved, if I add this to our server, turn the server on, now we can recall the client. If I call client system method help. Okay, we are connected. Cool. Method help. If I want to get information on the subtract function. Hey, cool. We get that documentation string. Subtract two numbers from each other. New line. Subtraction x y returns x minus y. So that's how you can kind of give your function a description in your server by having these the documentation strings inside the function and kind of determining what everything will do. You can write what arguments it takes, what it will return, what the function does, that sort of thing. It's all up to you. And that's kind of the beauty of it. So there it is. There's kind of your toolkit for a simple XML RPC server. You can add as many functions as you would like, um, kind of save whatever you need to do it with. And XML RPC can be written in just about any language, but we're using it in Python right now. So just as a, a really cool thing, you can pass data to something online, have it exist online, give it back to you, and that's really the beauty of this XML RPC server and, of course, the client that we've learned how to use. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you do kind of understand now how to set up your own server with this in Python and the cool things you can do, the functions that it takes to run it, and that sort of thing. Uh, all right. I'll, uh, I'll get out of your hair now, but thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye.